Razabani for IFO TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. He's taking his shoes off finally to come on the sand to do this interview. Spencer, Oliver, uh, Spent, this is different, isn't it? Do you know what, Raz? I love this. This has got like a 90s feel to it for me. Like, you know what I mean? When we used to go up and down the country and we'd be going to like all these different little places, it's like boxing has become very like sort of main cities. You're talking Liverpool's, Manchester's, London's, and we're getting the same stuff all the time. Coming here in Bournemouth on the beach, I've never been Bournemouth by the way. It's beautiful, man. It's um, yeah, it's a real nice feel to it. Obviously, we're here for a reason. And that's because we've got a show on Saturday night. Chris Billum Smith and Isaac Chamberlain. Uh, a great fight, and a lot of people are calling this a 50-50. Listen, it's a great fight. A great fight. And I tell you what, I was with Isaac Chamberlain earlier on. He is like zoned in right now. You know, he's like you saw the change in him over the last couple of days. He's been sort of quite relaxed and quite focused. But today, he was like, you know, what I mean, reality had kicked in, and he knows what's in front of him. But yeah, he's he's super super confident, and it is a fifty a real fifty fifty. You know, um, Billum Smith has home advantage, and that could be crucial. You know. Um, because you know what he's like, he comes forward, he's very strong, but he can be sometimes one-dimensional and walking in straight lines. Chamberlain's a decent fighter, he's got a great boxing IQ, he puts his shots together and he's on a good run at the moment. I think fights like when he boxed Lawrence Acoli, people will remember that fight um, back in, when was it, 2018 or something, and he froze, do you know what I mean? But that was like his apprenticeship, he's been there now, he's done that, he's, you know, he's tasted that, and I think he's come back a better fighter for that, and um, yeah, it's a real 50-50 for me. You got the um, you got the boxer, the silky smooth, you know, boxing skills of Chamberlain, but he can get tough as well. Do you know what I mean? He can get down in the trenches. He can bite down on his gum shield. You know, he's been there. Like I say, he's had that apprenticeship. But um, yeah, Billum Smith will be a, a, a favourite because he's at home and he's he's on a good run himself. But tough fight. Looking forward to Ben Whitaker's debut finally. Can't wait. I love him. I, lo I love everything about him. You know, he's got that. Do you know what I liked about Ben Whitaker? Right. And this stuck with me from when he done that. So when he won the Olympic silver medal, now most people would go, I'll bite your arm off for that. Now I won a Commonwealth Games silver, right? And before I went out to the Commonwealth Games to, to explain it, before I went to the Commonwealth Games, if you would have told me I was getting a silver medal, I would have I would have taken that in a heartbeat. But when you get there, like silver's like the first loser. Do you know what I mean? Second is like the first loser. So I've never took that out of the drawer. And he said something very similar to that. He was like, when he won that silver, he was very disappointed with it, felt that he'd underachieved and all that. And I, I like that because he's got a winner's mentality, you know, and that comes across, you know, you see him, it comes across in his performances. He's a, yeah, he's a real talent. And I think teaming up, uh, teaming up with Sugar Hill was a brilliant move. It really was because, you know, he's sort of like unorthodox and he's very light on his feet and he throws shots from all sorts of angles. He's very unpredictable, but Sugar Hill, is implementing that stuff where he plants his feet from time to time and he tells him when to do that and like lets his shots go and he's sitting down on his shots as well. So, yeah, it's a good team up, that is, and um, looking forward to following his career. I don't just think he's going to be a world champion. I think that he's going to be a superstar. He could be the next big thing out of Britain. Spend just but before I carry on, just want to make the, anyone aware who's watching this that if there is any wind in the background, we are on the beach and it is quite Absolutely, windy. Mate. Here. Um, Fraser Clark obviously returns, makes his second pro fight after having a hand injury that kept him out for a little while. Yeah. But uh, a force to reckon with eventually as well? Yeah, definitely. You know, Fraser's, you know, he's got that experience. He was around a long time. Very unlucky not to pick up the gold medal, if I'm honest, in the, in the Olympics. Um, you know, getting the bronze, picking up that cut sort of for me, stops him from getting that gold medal. But um, yeah, I think that you can fast track Fraze. He's been around a long time. You know, he's sparred numerous rounds of anti Joshua and Tyson Fury, all the, all the heavyweights. You know, he's got that experience. So you haven't got to hold, hold back on him. And I think speaking to him as well, he recognizes that. And he said, listen, I don't want to be like, do you know what I mean? I don't want that development thing. I've done, I've done my apprenticeship. I'm ready to go. So yeah, I, um, I'm looking forward to following his career as well. What a great guy. No, absolutely. Um, Spencer, I just want to ask you, obviously Chris Billum smith was with Eddie Hearn uh, on, on Sky and then moved to the zone with Eddie Hearn. Obviously, we know Chris has been calling for a homecoming for a while. It didn't happen. What do you kind of make of the, the whole leaving Eddie Hearn and, and coming to Sky to, to finally get his, his dream of fighting in his hometown? Well, look, he got his dream, didn't he? So, you know, he's got his dream of fighting in his hometown. And like I said to you, like coming back to these sort of places is like uh, it's a breath of fresh air. 
you know, it's like there's a real like, buzz around town. It's going to be nuts in there as well, you know. So, yeah, I think it was a good move for Chris Billum Smith. I think that it was, you know, he felt that that was right. He's got a big platform, you know, there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on the fight. So, look, he's got his wish. So, you can't, you know, you can't say no more than that. You know, what Eddie's doing is great as well. You know, he's doing his own thing. But, you know, Billum Smith chose to go down this route with Boxer and Sky. So, you know, I think it was a good move. Well, Cody pulled out some tweets as well uh, regarding Eddie Hearn. Looks like he's not happy uh, for whatever reason. He's contractually got one fight left. We know Sky didn't make an offer, which Eddie said he has seen. But what is going on on that side of the pond? Do you know what it is, Raz? I think it's all about... It's all about, like, the zone is, is a new platform. You know, it's a new platform and it's like an app and I think they were hoping to get BT and that never quite happened for whatever reason. And so they're not getting the numbers. And I think from a fighter's point of view, they, they want, you know, they want eyeballs on them. You know what I mean? They want the numbers. And Sky has that platform. It's, it's a well-established platform. So I can understand why the fighters are frustrated and they, and they want to jump ship because... You, as a fighter, yeah, it's great and you're getting loads of money. That's lovely, but it's nice to be recognised as well. When you're walking down the street and someone says, yeah, great fight last night. The trouble with the zone is that a lot of these fighters, like walking down the street, Lawrence Akoli be walking down the street and people go to him, when are you fighting again, mate? Do you know what I mean? That's, that's the reality of it because it's only your hardcore boxing fans at the moment. I'm not saying the zone won't work, but what I'm saying is it's like, at the moment, it's a slow burner. A little bit like you... Walking in Bournemouth and I had to just <laughs> grab you from the midst of the fans and say, listen, I need to interview listen, this man. Mate, you know me, man. I'm always good for an interview. Um, Spence, I know it's not been officially announced, but there are very, very, very strong rumours that Chris Eubank Jr. will be fighting Conor Ben. Now, you were in that era of, yeah. of Ben Eubank and that was huge for British boxing. For question one, is that a good fight for both fighters? Financially, yeah. I think financially it makes, you know, it makes sense because people want to see it. You know, like, you know, if you go back to their dads like Chris and, and, and Nigel, like they were, they were pulling in like sort of 20 million viewers. You know, they were fucking superstars. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think that financially it works. Um, but it's all about this weight, isn't it? I think the stumbling block at the moment is the, is the weight. I don't think Eubank can make 156. And I know they're putting this rehydration clause in here and I think that's a bit of a problem as well. Um, but I'm, you know, I've seen Eubank, he's boxed as high as 168, and I've seen him at 160, and he looks tight at 160, really tight at 160. So that extra four pounds to the normal person is like losing four stone. It's a lot of weight, and that can be dangerous. You know, a lot of people are talking about, you know, the size of Eubank, and that will be in his favour. He's too big for Connor, but if you're struggling too much to make the weight, that saps the energy and saps the strength, and then it's a level playing field. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. It's a really interesting one. I think it's all about it's all about what weight it's made at and the rehydration clause. And you know, I think that Eubank obviously he's saying one five six, but he wants to be able to put on more than ten pounds because he probably would. Um, but yeah, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. But it's a fight that will capture the imagination. I'm sure the build-up will be brilliant. One five, if one five six is is the number that everyone's touting at the yeah. moment. That is going to be the weight. Spencer, as a as an ex fighter. What do you think is the minimum kind of rehydration clause that Junior needs to be satisfied for the fight? I think that I think that 158 would be a struggle for Junior, if I'm totally honest. And I think that his rehydration clause, it, I, I reckon you've got to be looking at... Like, he would put on... Say if he come in at 160, he's going in the ring probably at 175, something like that, I would say. He'd put the best part of a stone on. So I, I think that the, he... They probably want no more than ten pounds, like the IBF rules. But Eubank Junior will be going. No, listen, I need more. I need more because I need to put that fluid back in. So um, you know, it doesn't sound like a lot at the moment. It sounds like they they're nearly there, but the two stumbling blocks are the rehydration clause and that one five six. They are two massive problems. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, let's see how it all pans out. The zone had this ethos that there was no more pay-per-view. Then, um, very recently, in the last 12 months, it was there will be pay-per-views for the the ultimate superstars, the big boys, you know, the Anthony Joshuas, etc. Uh, Eddie did an interview with IFO yesterday, and he said that it, if it did get made, Eubank Jr. and and Conor Ben, it will be pay-per-view. Is that a pay-per-view fight? Oh, definitely. I think Eubank, uh, Eubank Jr. and um, Conor Ben is definitely a pay-per-view fight because of the history of the dads. Do you know what I mean? Their dads are going to play a massive part in that as well, in the build-up um, to the fight. So, yeah, listen, it is a pay-per-view fight for the just for the history of the two. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like going back 30 years. So, 
Yeah, I can see it. I can see it happening. Um, pay per view, definitely. Moving on, heavyweight division announced uh, yesterday, I believe, or the year before. Sky Sports have got the rights for for Joshua and Usyk, and you must be a happy man because you might be going to Jeddah. <laughs> I am going to Jeddah. Yeah, I'm. A, yeah, I'm a happy man, mate. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, it's a tough fight for AJ. He knows that. He's not stupid. Um, yeah, and it ends up in Saudi. Listen, they, you go where the money is. You know, it's a dangerous sport that we're in. I get it. You know, there was massive money on the table, and that's where it is. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the fight. I really am. It's like it's one of those ones that AJ now goes in maybe for the first time as a massive underdog going into this fight. So you know, he was a bit, you know a lot of people thought that he wouldn't turn it, turn the Ruiz um, fight around the second time, and he'd done that, and he stuck to a game plan. It's all about you know, it's all about. It's not just actually, it's not just about AJ implementing. It's all right, people are saying he needs to find that rawness he once had when he boxed Kalichko. He needs to go, go in there and he needs to take it to him. But Usyk's a clever cookie. You know what I mean? He's a smart guy and he'll be expecting that and he'll set traps. And that, that could be AJ's undoing. So it's an interesting one. It's all about the tactics, who gets it right, who gets it wrong. But for me, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a tough one for Anthony Joshua. It is. I know this might not be a question for you, but obviously you, you're part of the Sky team, but it was only announced two days ago at latest, three weeks till the fight. Is that enough time to kind of promote this? Because fans were getting a bit worried that this fight might not even be, might not go on any TV platform in the UK. Do you know what it is? I don't think the fight needs promoting. I think because of the history, you know, of the first fight, I think that, you know, um, three weeks, if it was a normal fight, yeah, of course, you've got to go and you do your tours and promote it and let people know it's happening. But, you know, Three weeks is enough for a fight of that magnitude. I think, you know, that will pull in massive numbers. Massive numbers. Um, I don't. I know a lot of people weren't happy about the price. What was it, 26, 27 quid? 26.95. 26.95, yeah. So I know a lot of people are not happy about it, but guess what? They'll pay it because it's a good It's, it's a good fight. Do you know what I mean? And so, yeah. Spence, uh, okay, I'll let you go. Obviously, I know we've got a lot uh, to do this week as well. We've got the workout kicking off in a couple of hours, the weigh-in tomorrow, same place, and then obviously fight night, so I'm sure we'll do something else during the week. 100%. Raz, you know what? I've been on the go since half past four this morning. Half past four, man. I had to drive to the train station, train to Waterloo, train to Bournemouth, drive here. Oh, mate, it's been mad. But um, you should have yeah. got a train to me, and I would have driven you down, mate. Yeah, I know. Well, listen, you're driving me back. Don't worry. <laughs> Spence Oliver, IFL TV, thank you very much. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.